Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Julie Bullock. She's joining us here as VP, Global Head of Clinical Pharmacology and Translational Medicine at Sertara. She's joining us here on Health Professional Radio to discuss the FDA's Oncology Center of Excellence's new initiative called Project Optimus. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Julie Bullock, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Neil. Thank you for including me in this important discussion today. A bit of your professional background, if you would. What is your area of expertise? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I started my career off as a clinical pharmacist and um, was introduced to clinical drug development and specifically clinical pharmacology and oncology drug development very early in my career. Um, and then I headed to the Food and Drug Administration uh, sort of on a whim and, and was a reviewer and a team leader there in the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research working on oncology applications for about 10 years. Um, when I left the FDA, I became a consultant and have been working in the clinical oncology space, um, helping different biotechs and pharma uh, navigate regulatory and drug development um, of mostly oncology assets. So uh, the, the topic of oncology Dosing and dose optimization has been something that has been a part of my career while I was at the FDA and has been a significant component since I had left. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled to see the Project Optimus is, is being launched, and um, I'm delighted to talk with you about it today. Well, before we get into this new initiative, Project Optimus, give us some insight into what the typical approach to oncology drug development is and how the current state of the landscape is looking so I'll start with the, you know, the typical approach. And, and if I forget to go into the FDA's, you know, reasons why, um, please, please ask me that question again. But the, the typical approach to oncology drug development and oncology dose selection is based solely on toxicity. Um, most, and this is a little bit of a carryover of what we saw back in the cytotoxic days when we were developing cytotoxics for the treatments of, of cancer. Um, and in this instance, in this paradigm, um, you would escalate dosing in groups of three up to a point where you would receive um, what we call dose-limiting toxicities in two out of the three subjects. And once you saw those dose-limiting toxicities, you would then declare the dose level prior as the maximum tolerated dose. So you pushed dose. Um, up to a point where you would see toxicity because uh, cytotoxics were given, um, they, they affect, they, the effects of cytotoxics are on all rapidly dividing cells. So the more you can give, technically, the better. Um, and it would treat more of the rapidly dividing cancer cells that you had in, in the body. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem is, is that this, this MTD paradigm of uh, dosing to toxicity has now been uh, taken into the targeted agents. Um, and, you know, if we're, if we're developing a drug that's specific enough to hit a certain target, um, we should be dosing that drug to the target, not to toxicity. Um, dosing it to toxicity means that we're more than likely overdosing our patients and we don't need to. Um, I think that the reason why we use this paradigm in current oncology practices is because it's easy, um, and we've been doing it for years. And so a lot of companies um, just uh, kept applying an old, uh, an old analysis or an old approach to cytotoxics to our targeted therapies because that's what we're used to. Uh, we're not used to really understanding dose on, at a more granular level in, in the oncology space. Um, you know, the problems with, with, with dosing to toxicity for targeted agents are, are numerous, and I think that's kind of what has led the FDA to the Project Optimus initiative. So um, targeted agents are, you know, if we think about the oral small molecule targeted agents that are now very common in the oncology space, they're given daily um, for months, years of therapy until progression. Uh, which is a lot different than giving a drug on a cyclical weekly cytotoxic type regimen for six months. Um, patients are more sensitive to adverse events that are considered to be low grade. So grade one, grade two, diarrhea, nausea, fatigue, you know, having these types of adverse events that occur on a daily basis for months 
to a year is something that's not sustainable to a patient. But if we don't need to give them those toxicities, then we shouldn't. Um, I think that, uh, you know, why Optimus and why now? The, the FDA has been talking about dose optimization all the way back to 2013. So this was when I was still at the FDA. Um, there was workshops, there was ASCO workshops, there was AACR workshops, there was workshops with Friends of Cancer Research, and there was also numerous publications that came out of these workshops about the need for alternative approaches to dosing targeted agents that were looking past this NTD and DLT criteria sorts of approaches. And, you know, now we're in 2022 and nothing has really happened. You know, pay, uh, clients and sponsors are still developing drugs based on the, the, the same criteria that we have done for, for years in the past. Mm -hmm. And the agency isn't seeing any, any changes. Um, and we're still having a lot of the issues with regards to adherence and compliance and, um, seeing that, you know, in our pivotal studies, patients start at a high dose, but they are having to have dose reductions that are, you know, maybe two or three steps lower than the dose that they initially started on, which calls into question whether or not they even needed to start at that dose that caused toxicities in the first place. And so that, I think, is what leads us all to where we are today. What do you think is the pushback, the, the um, I guess, the, maybe the main factor in why we're still using the current standard, is it about the pipeline, sustaining the pipeline, or is there going to be a difficulty replacing the current standard with this new targeted standard? What do you think the holdup is? Um, so I think the reason why people haven't started to use alternative approaches is because, well, it, it is multifactorial. There First of all, the FDA continues to still accept NTD approaches. So if you see a regulatory agency continuing to approve drugs that have NTD approaches, then you automatically assume that that approach is okay and that I can do it for my compound. So one is that that needs to change. Um, the second is that I think that a lot of companies feel that if they're going to use an approach that's not based on toxicity, the only alternative is to really understand the differences between the efficacy component of different dose levels. And then that then calls into question as to how can you compare the efficacy between two different dose levels? And then people start getting into statistics of things and assigning P values. And, and then those studies start to get incredibly large and prohibitive. You just can't do that. Um, and so then people are like, well, that's too big. We can't do that. So let's just go back to toxicity. So they, <laughs> they have a tendency to see that something's not sustainable. And so they, they, they revert back to something that's been done and has been accepted for, for years. The other thing is that, you know, kind of understanding the biology of these targets and whether or not they're really working to mitigate tumors and, and the, the pharmacodynamics and any of the biomarkers associated with these and their relationship to an actual improvement in tumor growth or response for patients is relatively innocuous. And so it's very difficult to, the, the translation of, um, of systemic concentrations of drugs to tumor concentrations of drugs is something that's been uh, very hard to pin down over the last 10 years. And, and, and I don't think it's going to be getting any easier. And so, you know, I think in addition to having this as a call for our clinical development that needs to get stronger and better, but also our translational that uh, needs to get better. We've come a long ways in oncology and and how we've treated oncology patients, but yet our um, the early non-clinical and translational sciences, I feel, and the real understanding of some of these targets and in the tumor environment is what is really, really needed. And we need uh, some additional science and, and hypothesis-driven tests happening there. You know, the... I think that the reason why people also refer back to MTD and DLT is that it's, it's fast. So you can identify this dose level. If you have five dose cohorts, you can identify what your dose level is within six to nine months, depending upon enrollment and how fast you can enroll these cohorts. Um, 
uh, looking at dose levels for efficacy takes a lot longer because you have to wait three to six months to see efficacy readouts, whereas for the, um, you know, choosing dose based on safety, you only have to follow the patient for a, a month. Um, so you can see how this then delays uh, a lot of things and, and slows down slows down programs, which, you know, is uh, a, de- a clinical developer just doesn't want to do. So um, I hopefully the listeners can understand why, you know, even though the NPD approaches make no sense, how they are very desirable um, because they're fast and, and easy. Give us a website where our listeners can learn more, as you said. Um, yeah, so for more information, your listeners can definitely go to uh, sertara.com. Uh, where there is a blog that I wrote earlier in the year that kind of gets into some of these topics that we've discussed today. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio, giving us this information. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Yes, thank you so much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Julie Bullock, Vice President, Global Head of Clinical Pharmacology and Translational Medicine at Sertara. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.